the birth of another important forum in the university that hope to promote the essence of views and ideas, create connections, and also the sense of community in the university. Once again, we we'll welcome all of you to this celebration, and I would like to request that in the tradition of the university, we say a uh, open prayer. May the Almighty God have some prayers. Mr. Vice Chancellor, with the permission, I would like that members who will be inaugurated in a few minutes from now, introduce themselves that those who are not part of the inauguration. Thank you, sir. My name is Professor Ilema Naatafu. I'm the Director of the Center for Entrepreneurial Development at the Federal University of Latvia. I was invited to be here today and a member of the University Center. Vice Chancellor, distinguished members of the University community. My name is Professor George Bini. I'm the Secretary of St. Gabriel, the Arc India Catholic Chaplaincy here in the University. I'm a member of Senate. I'm a member of Senate. My Vice Chancellor, I'm your team. Fellow colleagues, my name is Josephine Ego Uke, Chief Faculty of Education, Member of Senate, Chairman of the Committee of Provost, Deans, and Directors. I'm my family. <laughs> From recycling habits and misery, student representatives, council president, federal minister of Nadia, and the now specific chairman. Bosa! 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 Bulu Bulu! Bemba! I would be lying in the Italian team, so I'm lying in the Italian team. The deputy vice chancellor, the registrar, the bosser, the university librarian, Teams and directors, heads of departments, professors, other members of the Senate, our other members of this very important forum, that is students and their staff here present. Good morning to every one of us. I want to combine the three items here. The first is for me to make my remark. The second will be to make the forum. And the third will be a short lecture on leadership. First, by my remark. If we all know leadership is to serve God and also serve others. If you are a leader and you are not focused on this, you are definitely not a leader. In my own case, to serve the minds means that. You have to take care of everybody. If you are to serve humanity, it is for you to take care of everybody. But you should not confuse yourself that you can satisfy everybody. Serving everybody doesn't mean satisfying everybody. But then, if you have to take care of everybody, it is also meaning that you have to reach out to everybody. But then in this university, I look at it that if I want to serve everybody, I need to reach out to everybody. But the only way for me to do that is to create a platform where all the stakeholders in this university can be reached out. And this will have 
leader from it's a platform for all the stakeholders in this place. Irrespective of your faith, irrespective of your tribe, irrespective of the community you come from, and irrespective of your status. This Fulafia leader forum is going to take care of all of us. Because every stakeholder in this university has a saving. For some of all that got the invitation for this inauguration, you will see the list of members, or you see the membership for this forum. I want us to study carefully if there is any stakeholder that is committed. Please, we need to call attention of the management to this so that we can prove such stakeholder. Because this platform is very, very important to all of us. We don't want anybody to be left out. And this signifies that all of us are important in this university. If I should go through the memo we sent to all of us, we said formation of Latvia Leader Forum, and this was written to all of us at the register through my instruction that I write to inform you of the formation of Latvia Leader Forum with me as the chairman and the other members of the forum are all principal officers of the university right from the vice chancellor of the university of Abelia, then provost of college of medicine all the things all directors the chairman and secretary of house chairman and secretary of NASA, chairman and secretary of NAS, chairman and secretary of SAM, chairman and secretary of Muslim Women, chairman and secretary of Christian Community, chairman and secretary of SRC, chairman and secretary of SRC, and then chairman and secretaries of all registered student association, all these are members. And then we have Mrs. Francisca, a principal as a registrar as a secretary. Now I want to go to the terms of reference before I read this forum. The first is for us to share our experience on leadership among the stakeholders. As I said, all the students of this university are represented here. And they are represented through their leaders, either the chairman or secretary. And any meeting that I want to hold, if the chairman of that particular association or leader is not there, the secretary will be there. And this is to say that whatever meeting we hold in under this forum, nobody will be left out in terms of information that we will give So it is for us to share our leadership experience. It's second is to promote good leadership in the university. Because it is only the good leadership in the university that can help us to attain the quality we are working for and to also raise productivity in our system. To mentor the younger ones especially the students in leadership. As we know, the, the forum has leadership of students as members, and in this case, through our discussion, being their mentors, there are a lot of things they will learn from us. To also promote peace and unity in the university, because this particular forum will be used to give some very sensitive and important and strategic information to the stakeholders of the university 
so that for those that can spread rumor or for those that can say things that are not correct, as we are saying it, people will come by you because they are represented where some decision will be taken. And in this case, if all of us get the truth at all time, we are going to believe in the system. And if we all believe in the system, this will reduce the numbers of those with bad attitude to our system. And this is my effort, is just to see how we can improve in the integrity of everybody in this university. And the only way to do that is to use this kind of forum to promote peace and unity. They are the peace, they are the unity. The development of the university becomes very easy for us to get. The next one is also to use this forum to mobilize resources for the development of the university in all ramifications, irrespective of where you come from, which tribe you belong, which faith you belong. This university can use it to attract funds or resources for the university. But the moment some people think that we are not being carried along, even if they have the opportunity to assist the university, they will not be. But if these forums now become more formalized, and you are part of it. We are the scholar people struggling to develop the system. You have opportunity to also show yourself. And everybody will want to showcase its own stakeholder and be the best. And this is the only way we can raise the quality of our university. So it's very important that we should all look at these terms of reference of this particular forum and work with it in a practical sense. It's not just for us to read it, and it's for all of us to use it and participate in the activity of this particular forum. After the revolution, we are going to start how we should be scheduling our meetings. It depends on the membership or the members of the forum to suggest how will be the nature of our meeting, how what will be the frequency of it, and uh, it will be good if we make more of it. So in this case, today has been fixed to be the day we are to inaugurate this particular philosophy forum. And with this explanation and my remarks, I want to use this opportunity to say that Fulafia Leader Forum of Federal University of Latvia is hereby inaugurated. Thank you very much. And that has taken care of item three and four. Now the item five please to use in my in my more remark when I'm called upon. And I say king of me. And that's to say what that speaker presented for me. I call him King of Nino. So, when I was invited to make my remark, and I told them what we are listening to today is just King of Nino. And I tried to explain to the audience why I turned that lecture to the King of Nino. And in my narration, these are the Items are mentioned. And I left it in one of the five. And it was time with another day for me to just meet with our NYC member that we are leaving the university, that 
the DC should advise them. If that all came to me that why not use this to advise the court members? So I use this particular judgment to advise the court members. It was after that that I invited another resource person to come and talk to us on the topic of leadership. And I felt as to develop this. Let me develop this and join the other resource person to deliver it as a lecture. And in short, that was how I came up to develop this uh, paper. So you can see, this is just how this idea came up. When I will do the introduction, I will let us know what leadership is all about. Then when we say came from this one, what do you mean? It's just an analogy. I'm going to explain that. Then this came from this one has a nature. What how what is the nature of it? And then the evidence of the came from this one. And then this evidence, what are the sources? Where do we get them from? And then the came from this one. Somebody may be thinking, if it's a cake, how does it taste? Then who are those that benefit when they eat this cake of freedom? And what are the benefits they are getting from it? Then by the time you get all this, and you decide to say you want to pay the cake of freedom, how do you pay it? So, by the time we go through all this, we'll be developing our idea about leadership. So, if I want to start by the conclusion that many leaders show up every day very well intended, doing the best they can, yet they often fall short of what organization needs and what employees want. We see leaders, they have good intention for the system. They want to put in their best and achieve a lot of system. But then they will end up failing. What are the reasons? The first reason is for a leader that fail, if you are the first one, you are first one asking. When he was looking for that leadership, what is the question he asked himself? What is the question I asked himself? There are people that want to be there and they want to be there and they want to be there. How can I do that? How can I get there? Some people fail when they tell them. But you ask ideas. Because you ask why you want to be there. There will be a very big picture of issues that will come to you. And that will guide you in success. And that will guide you from your job. You will also be able to identify capable hands that will prevent your plans. And that is before you become a leader. But for those that always ask how to become a leader, and when you get that leadership, and you sure you don't have a plan, problems or you are the prime people that will come and create the plan for them. And some of them, when they get there, sometimes it will take them weeks, months, before they really identify people that will work with them. Those are the people that ask themselves how to become a leader. But if you ask yourself, why do you want to become a leader? You will prepare yourself before you get there. And if you get that position, even within one hour, you can identify those people that work for you because they are being paid. In general, organizations need leaders who can effectively balance the accountability for being for work being accomplished with inspiring employees. Just because you are good and what you do does not necessarily mean that you will be a good leader. 
experts is not leadership. If you are experts in mathematics, that doesn't mean you'll be a good leader. If you are experts in agricultural economics, that doesn't mean you'll be a good leader. This is to tell you that being a professor of agricultural economics doesn't make you a good leader. You have to prepare yourself to be a leader. Whatever is your discipline, whatever is your smartness, whatever is your level of knowledge, you can only become a good leader when you prepare to be a good leader. So people should not just look at seniority in the system. You should not just look at status or wealth in the society to think that, oh, let us be so special because of the status and wealth and knowledge is going to be a good leader. No. Leadership is a different thing. As you progress in your profession, in your career, and move towards leadership, it is important that you dedicate time towards learning how to be a leader. Organization wants results, and employees want fulfillment. So this is to tell you that you must learn to be a leader. It's not something that you just find yourself in a position and think you can perform any magic to make a good result. It's not so. And that's why I've been, I've been advising some of the longer academics. You are a lecturer now, maybe graduate assistant, assistant lecturer, and whatever is your rank. You need to learn about leadership. And leadership is not when you are a leader before you start learning about leadership. Learn about leadership before you get there. Because the organization you are going to help on your head wants results. The employee, those working under you, also want fulfillment. But how do you get that? You must prepare for effective strategy that will do that for you. Below are seven steps to help you as. You begin to prepare yourself for leadership sources. We have seven steps. The first one is what this lecture we talk about. We have seven steps, but this what this lecture we emphasize on is only the first step. Bake and eat the cake of wisdom. That is to develop a package of ideas and values that will serve as your personal principles for self-discipline. This is what cake, bake and eat the cake of the wisdom is telling us. Then the second step is that you must commit to learning how to be a leader. You have to read about it. You have to attend. You have to attend conferences or workshop for leadership position. So you need to, regardless of the date of your promotion, either in the past or future, I encourage you to continuously commit to the study of leadership. That is, you have to read the books on leadership, attend seminars, participate in training, and talk to others who are in leadership. This is how you can prepare yourself. That is the second step. The third, find a mentor. Find a mentor. And if I say here, a mentor is different from a role model. A role model is somebody you see at far. You like his principle, you like his conduct, and you enjoy his welfare and other activity, but you have not had direct contact with such a person. But you love him for all he has achieved, for all he's doing, for, the, for his conduct, and you are trying to practice what the person is practicing. 
or you also go to identify some books about the person and read so that you can get how the person get there, how is he conducting himself. That is the role model. But your role model can advance and become even your mentor. When you read about somebody and then you now identify means of reaching out to the person so that you can be with him directly to discuss one on one. It may be through physical contact like this or online, but you are talking to him directly for him to advise you. That is the method. It's different from role model. A role model is far away. You don't even have uh, a way of talking to him directly, but you are copying some of the things he's doing because you know he's going to influence your life. But what we are saying here is that you should find a mentor. Even if you have a role model, look for a way to reach out to that role model. Let it become your mentor. Identify a role model or a leader whom you admire, a leader you would like to learn from. Ask this person if he or she will be willing to meet with you every four, four or, or to six weeks. That is, you must have periods of engagement with your mentor. During the meeting, plan to use your mentor as a resource person by troubleshooting issues you are experiencing. Ask him or her to help you determine what to do and what to say in a variety of situations. Because as a leader, you must know what to do at different occasions. You must know what to say at different occasions. For example, I went around various faculties, starting with the faculty of agriculture, up to management, science, education. So for all these faculties, there are common things I tell them, and there are things that differ from faculty to faculty. And now, yesterday we are here for another event of congregation. Some of the things I told them yesterday is not what I'm telling you here. So and as a leader, you must choose your words, your statements, as you talk to different audience. But if you are a leader that cannot select your statement to match with audience, you are not a leader. And this also, you must learn it. You must get people that can guide you on what to say at a variety of situations. And this can be reported from mentors. In addition, ask if they will be willing to share wisdom and insight from their own experiences to help you advance your professionalism. The fourth one, you should get comfortable with uncomfortable conversation. As a leader, it's not everything that should put you off. As a leader, sometimes there will be a situation where maybe your follower will say you are a stupid, a stupid person. There will be a situation that as a leader you should not respond to such. So you should also know when you are to react. Because it's not every action that you should also give reactions to. But we should know that every action has its reaction. But there are some actions that you have to delay the reaction to it. And as a good leader, you must also identify time to react to issues. But if you are a leader that reacts to all issues at all times, one day the, your reaction may also work against you. So it's very important. This is critical. Many leaders, when faced with difficult situations, they choose to avoid. They do not know what to say. They do not know what to do. And so, they do not. So what I'm saying here is that, as a leader, you should know that every action must have its reaction. Don't just give any action without reaction. 
Because there are some people that also forget it. In this university, sometimes there are issues that come to my office. I may need it for almost a month, looking for appropriate time to react to that. But there is no issue that come to my office that I will not react to. And a good leader should not run away from any situation. Because there are some people that when situation come and they, are, they feel not comfortable with it, they will just say no. Or if they look at the issue, the issue they think if I act on this, it's going to be a test thing. They will not want to act. But then that's not intended. So never allow yourself doing nothing on any issue that comes to you as a leader. So even if the situation is not comfortable for you, you can move for appropriate time, you can move for appropriate strategy, and you can move for appropriate person that you may need to use at least to be part of your area. If you can learn how to approach people in a way that shows concern, and does not forget play, you will be ahead of the curve. As a leader, don't always be at the point of blaming others. As a master's law of this university, if somebody are appointed as they or director of things, somebody else. And the person report to me that this is what your day or director did. I will listen to him. Get all the information. But before I take any step, I will first of all tell him that please, whatever that this day or director has done to you using his office, I want you to consider it that I'm not like this. I will first of all tell him that. And I am telling him the apology. So if I know that he himself is wrong, I will first of all tell him this. Before not telling him where he himself is wrong. And I will tell him most of my HOD things and director that it is my responsibility to protect your interests. If since I am the one that appointed you, I don't see play because it is that in your office that allow you to commit that mistake. But the person that that your mistake affected may not be looking at it as a mistake. But then, if the report get to me as a branch as I will first of all beg the person offended. And I'll tell him that look, no, that thing that happened to you, consider it that you receive the offended and I'm telling the apologies. Then before I can now call on the person that's working for me or, or working under my instruction for what you have done. So that I can correct him. Because there are some people as a leader, they want they want them to bring the part of any of the subjects, they will go on to the answer, getting annoyed or necessary. That is that is not good enough. And the same thing, if it's not your subject that offends somebody, you are a leader somewhere. As a vice chancellor now, if somebody comes, accuse me wrongly of anything. Some people will expect ordinary me as men and women. There's no need for that. Because I've been telling people, when you are getting annoyed, you are punishing yourself. You are getting annoyed for somebody's wrong way, you are punishing yourself. And that is why some, sometimes some people look at the way I react to some issues as if I didn't bother. Yeah, it's not that I don't bother, but I don't want to punish myself. Because if you are getting annoyed or necessary, 
you want to play. That's what you, you want to play. And for you to play, you must be angry first. But what they need for you to be angry? If you're angry, you are punished yourself. Or just somebody's wrong. So, if you can avoid being unnecessary angry, you can avoid blaming people, you will be ahead of the curve. That's what I'm telling you. It will, be, it will also help if people understand your intentions to help everyone be the best they can be. Whatever anybody is doing under you as a leader, don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. At least they are setting them on progress in whatever they are doing. There is nothing bad for you to tell somebody you have not done this, you have not done that. But don't just outside condemn somebody. The next step is that you should establish professional standards. And when you say professional standards, I will go by this way. Have you ever talked about others behind your back? It's not professional. Have you talked poorly about company, institution you work for? For those that are still not yet a leader in this university, you are a leader in your house. If you are married and you have one wife, two children, you are already a leader. But then, if you are here in this university with me, I'm a student, I'm just a lecturer, and then you can go and be talking about individual negative. Or you give yourself time and opportunity to talk back about the university where you are serving. There are people like that. We have many of them in this university. How about profanity? Do you use it? Profanity. Maybe a Christian talking part of Muslim. Or a Muslim talking part of what are you doing okay with that? If you say a Christian says serving God, you as a woman you say you are serving God. Leave everybody to serve the, the, the worship set that you are doing is in your mind. Somebody will say rubbish talking about a Muslim. Or a Muslim will say, uh, uh, the Muslim will say rubbish about the Christian, but then what is in your mind is what God is considering, it's not what you say out. What is in your mind? Even before you see it, God has already even called it. So if you say you think you are using for time, you have to say condemning one tribe, condemning one religion. There are people that do that. I can tell you, such people, they can never be a leader. If you have that in you and you are thinking you want to be a leader, yes, you can be a leader, but you cannot be a good leader. A good leader doesn't believe in profanity. A good leader will not just condemn people. These are all examples of unprofessional behavior or standards. You talk bad about another person, you talk bad about another person. You call you talk bad about another, you know, religion. The essence of philosophical leaders for is for us to run away from all this. If you are Muslim, the less you understand in your mind. If you are Christian, your understanding is in your mind. Don't carry it to your head. I think that will give you what you want. If you are if you allow people to identify that you have, you carry Islam on your head, you carry Christianity on your head, honestly you cannot get to where you think you want to get. You are only seeing yourself. Because that's what God sent in it. If you have it, you believe in it, people will use it against you. People will use it against you. You cannot run away from it. What you are practicing, what you believe in, what you have, what you 
are doing, you should expect people will use it against you. Or in this university, that are doing that. As a leader, you need to hold yourself to the higher standard. If you are the type that doesn't talk negative about anything, you are the higher standard. That means you are always, you are always positive. But if you see somebody that practices negativity at one time, he's always a negative person. He always wants to know the path. So, now is a great time to begin to conduct yourself in such a way. If you know that uh, some of these things mentioned, and some, some of them you have practiced or not practiced, please let us know. So, these are the seven steps. But as I told you, not only the seven, but because of the vaccine. So, as a professional standard, as someone who does not talk about people behind their back, whatever you want to say about somebody that is back, be prepared to say it. Some people come to my office, they can make some statements. Right there, I will kill them. And if I talk to you here, I blame you, whatever I say, that is the end of it here. If you like, carry your heart heavy with anything negative about me out of the office, no problem. What I have done, I will leave myself. You brought a comment, I'm not comfortable with it. And instead of me to leave it in my heart for you to go, as you are starting with me, I will confront you. And when I talk to you, that is the end of it. So, there is no need to talk behind someone. I encourage you to have five to six standard or principle you follow unconditionally. If you want to avoid this kind of negative attitude, you have to set standard for yourself. You have to set principle for yourself. And that principle should be what you should follow. Even as somebody comes to you talking about something, they write it down your principle. What the person is saying, you try to match whether he has anything he's saying that is against that. The moment you have identified one, then try to stop him and say, oh, this is not what you want. You should be known for your standards. I know when I first presented this lecture, I gave my, my own principle here, which is my, stand, my, 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 my standard. And I put a camera up on and I say, eat a chin in house And why I put it like that in operational time is, I should be able to use that eat a chin when somebody comes telling me any wrong thing I eat or eat his head. But it's not this kind of eat a chin. One, integrity. T, transparency. A, accountability, C, consistency, and E, efficiency. That's why you are telling me. So, if you see that, that that's what I say is moving with it, that change, in case anybody will hit it or say, this is what I need to hit people to And when I say consistency, then people know what I need to do is that A, I will do is that B, on the same condition. So, no matter how close you are to me, I don't change that. And that's why I'm saying here, you should follow your principle unconditionally. Even if that is going to work against you, follow it. Let people believe in it. And that's how a good leader should be. Prepare for leadership by setting us in terms of how you conduct yourself. This is to say that you must show some level of uniqueness in yourself. I'm not proud of it, but I can tell you this particular form we have now in this university. I can be proved wrong. I don't think there's any 
the person that you have the And I'm telling you, there are many reasons that some investing will not happen to come to Why? Because we have many leaders today that are not prepared to get to that position where they have found themselves. I know of some vice chancellor that they are waiting for someone to come to their feet and say, I'm so so cleaner. You may be in front of your heart, say so so thing about you. And the ambassador will get down from his office and go and leave that way. It's happening so you can see. There are cases where the ambassador has not come to petition newly. And some people go to him and say, You see that director? support you when you are looking for that position and you will be taking a lot of the names of those that say they did not support you when you are looking for that position. And they wanted to get to the office the following day, they will write a letter, they will remove this one, put the other. So you are removing people because of others' emotion. Those are not good leaders. And some people will find it difficult to gather people of various interests like this. Because they want, there are certain things they want to do that they don't want anybody to talk against all those things. Whatever I want to do today, I am a Muslim. And I know I have fled from everybody in this universe. But there are some people who say, oh, if I do this, they will say, I am a Muslim. So I don't want Christians to be part of this meeting. If you are such a leader, it is very difficult for you to have this kind of role in place in your situation. And putting it in place, not because of anything, we want everybody in this place to consider himself and belonging to the one family. So the next step is that we should become effective at giving balanced feedback. Feedback is the most neglected responsibility of a leader. Our focus on feedback has two parts. Be generous with positive feedback. And be careful about the amount of negative feedback you focus on. As a good leader, when people come to tell you things, how do you balance the kind of information you are getting? Because that's why I'm telling people when you want to take decisions, don't rely on information alone. Because if you rely on information alone, you will be taking what we call accurate decision. It may give you good results this time and there. But if you want to apply the same instrument to go into fail, why? Because you have not consider the implication of that to your decision in the near future. And for those that believe in negative talk about others, this is what happened to them. They always take decision with information. And when they take decision with information, tomorrow they will not be regulating what they have done. I will tell people that since I started my career in the university system, for those that know me, I have become departmental exam officer, faculty exam officer, head of department, head of faculty, deputy vice chancellor administration, and the vice chancellor and other years before becoming a vice chancellor. But I can tell you, there's no day, there's no day that I will look back. And it makes what I've done on all these things. I've not seen that day. Some of the decisions I've taken injured me, but I know those are the right decisions. But after some years, I've been happy that I took those decisions. So, and I'm not saying this, Professor Agai was saying, when I was in the university, after my day shift, he was the one that took over immediately. And he's here. 
I did not even finish my teaching. She it may sell much for me to finish. But I look at it. I don't want to go to waste it. I have achieved what I want to achieve for the family. For the family. It may sell much for me to finish my teaching. I said, oh, I have to go for sabbatical and leave And that was how I went to the VC and said, I have got to sabbatical. He said, ah, you are still a baby. You have to finish your thing. I said, sir, I have a baby. Today, if, if I tell you A, if I'm not here, I'll promise that you tell me the same thing. So, which means I'm not doing anything wrong here. <laughs> so, and I can tell you, this has, this has been my practice. And that's why at any point in time, whatever happened for me, when I'm meeting, at any point in time, whatever happened to me, I don't feel bad. Why? Because right from the step one up to the point anything happens to me, I'm doing the right thing. And I can tell you today, if you are telling me I'm not saying the way it happened, you can't show and say you have been removed. If I remove a piece of flesh, I have laughed at me, I will still be happy. Because I know I've done what satisfies my mind. And I've done what satisfies your people's mind. Even though the moment of people's fear, the announcement that will be moved, they'll be happy. But I will not be that happy. Well, that's what I'm talking about. When it happened, I'm not sure how some people are happy. And uh, what I did was I stayed in that university for one week to, to celebrate my essence. So that I can be on the same page with my enemy. I will do that. I use the university money, use the university money to cook food and give them to it. So I think you might have it. So and this is how a leader should look at himself. But if you are a leader today, your tenure finish, you are feeling bad. Or maybe when it is just about one month for you to leave office and say two years and three, and you call everybody to come with anyone. At least what you are not doing. It means you have not been doing the right thing. If you are doing the right thing, you should be happy. So, that's why we say positive feedback should be your focus. And negative one, try to be careful of what, what you use them for. We need a ratio of five positive to one negative as you go through your day. If you have six issues in a day, and out of those six issues, you have connected negatively on five. You are a bad person. Not even a leader, a bad person. Because you have the opportunity of correcting. You should do it. So, if you have six issues, Five points is positive, one negative. It does a normal person. One of us, we are not 100%. We are not perfect. As a leader, you need to inspire others by focusing on what they are doing well. When people are doing things, there are people that they are only looking for where the guys are small and anything negative. So that you should be on social media. But any good thing you do, Turn their face. Well, even if they are looking at that thing, they can be blind. They will see it. So, it is very important that we try as a leader not to be condemning. And I'm saying this all of us here who are potential leaders. We are a leader now in that respect, but we are potential leader at the higher level. If you are a being, you are a director, then potential vice chancellor. And whatever I'm telling you today, if it's not meaningful to you, and you don't utilize it, go and write it down. You may end up, you may end up on your term successful, but you will be looking back and repeat it. There are many people like that. Even as they when they leave office, they look back and repeat. And that is why it starts with the right step. 
from the beginning. One gets the one that gets repeated. When you honor someone for being good, that person will be happy to repeat such a thing. At the same time, it is important to share suggestions for people to improve. You should be in position at all times to improve others. Don't be demoralizing people. You should be improving others. Begin today that if you inspire towards something bigger than where you are, you are today. Begin behaving as if you are already there. If you are not a branch also, you are just going to be a director or team of a faculty. You want to be a branch also. You can begin to behave like a vice chancellor. And how you behave like a vice chancellor, try to see who is the best vice chancellor in the world, in Nigeria, in Africa. Look at the attributes and whatever. Let such a person be your role model and do not say what such a person is. If you are behaving to be somebody that you are not today, that's your behavior itself is a prayer to you. Because you do certain things, someone will say, oh, may you be our master. Because you are behaving like a master to what the person. Or if you are like a master to what someone will say, oh, may you be the minister of education. It means you are behaving like a minister of education. And your behavior is also a prayer. It's not only when you raise your hand to God and you are pronouncing words, praising God, thanking God, telling God you need social things. With your own behavior, you can pray. Because you will you, 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 you behave in a way that will make somebody to utter words of prayer for you. And you don't know the relationship of that person with God. And that's why you don't, you, you don't, you should not tolerate anybody. Don't tolerate anybody. If you are a professor today, don't tolerate common level students. One, you don't know your relationship with God may not be as strong as his own relationship with God. If you open his mouth to cause you, don't think that oh, it's only my mother and father that can cause me. There are some people that, because of their closer to God, they will say something and it will follow you. When you may not as sharp as when your mother said, but you see the sound So, your behavior is your prayer. Now, this is just a uh, Introduction. What is leadership? Sorry, Professor. But I will not take longer now. When I say this is the introduction, you look at it. I will. <laughs> well, other content are very short. What is leadership? Leadership is the ability of an individual or a group of individuals to influence and guide followers or other members of the organization. If you can influence others, you are a leader. And when we say influence, you see, leaders, there are people who can influence to do party. There are people who can influence to do good. But if you can influence somebody, to do anything, you are a leader. And we have uh, Shikao as the leader of uh, Boko Haram. Because he's a president, he's a leader. But what we are saying here is we want leaders that will friend people to do good things. That's the essence of our own here. So that's because about the then King of Wigan. It's just an analogy. 
And I want to describe it for the following. If we say cake is that food made from a mixture of flour, fat, egg, sugar, and other ingredients, they are sometimes ice or decorated. The variety of ingredients and decoration items in the cake make it sweet and attractive for, for consumption and used for celebration. He has written the name in that book with the offense. And that whenever he had the opportunity, he, will, he must punish them. And so I was asking so that I hope my name is not there. <laughs> he said, well, Paulino, see if your name is there, I won't approve you. But I don't know what kind of leader is that one, but we pray that we don't have one there. So it's time for comments. And I would like to call on the members here to ask questions and comments. To about Professor Shepard of Ghana University. When he was assistant lecturer at Amadou Bello University. This he has just said, they are just his character. Not because he's a vaccine. No. In the in fact in Ida, there is what we call research review. Uh, research review is done almost in the year. Uh, so, there was a time, his team, they supplied them with about some amount of fertilizer to take it for a particular location. So, the fertilizer is over, it was over what is needed in that location. A member of the team sold that fertilizer and said, Prophet, in the young case, I'm not going this is your share. The vice chancellor rejected that that's what I, that amount that you gave. Right from that time, as an expenditure, when the salary was given nothing. This is to show you that the vice chancellor suggests here doesn't look at those type those type of form, and therefore he rejected that amount of uh, the money given to him and opted out of that committee. That was the end of him in that particular committee to confirm to you. His integrity, not now, but he has been doing like that right from the beginning. Thank you. Very much. More or less new to this university. But I mean, I'm not new to my chancellor. And in DBC, I'm not new to you for my people. You may not know me. Um, I didn't start my career very really I was in the ministry, ministry, federal ministry of Africa. And let me see, sir, I was in Nairobi for 16 years, three months, so I don't remember. I will have my period in 2000. I decided to take course of the And of course, I joined the Southern State University, because it was the employer. I didn't know who was a man, but was a man. In 2002, I guess, I came for Inter. In my life, I've never been to Kesu. But we're all there for interview, we met. But the point I'm making is this. When in very I got the job, or we got the job together, and the two of us, we reported the same. But I can tell you that I reported before me, one hour before me. And you see that one about to be a senior to be a I remember when we reported to the vice chancellor then, Professor Kamubeki, he was just leaving the office, was introduced by the late Professor Adewani, who was at the BBC. Then I arrived. And I remember the one said, oh, another place of agriculture. Now, there is a place I'm driving at. When you talk of wisdom, in Yoruba, we say, although we call on God. But it is it's not your age that makes you the wise. If that is so, and if that is the case, most kids will be in the hands. But a child that is just growing up and made a king, the 
plus one by hereditary and her wisdom. When I joined the university, like I said, I was in the ministry. And of course, I worked with people in my degree that made me know what is why it is important to be published, which gave us the rank we got at that time. We came as a senior lecturer at that time. I approached it. That was when the university system was good. Good in the sense that when, if you remember, so when we resumed, the two comes together in the hotel, those days the two hotel. When the hotel together, in fact, in Kenfu, that time they consider us as twins because we are always going out together. We are the only two in faculty of faculty. We started the faculty together the same day. We wrote all the brief on the faculty the same time. So I approached it. I said, well, you have been in this system in Nepal before me. I used to say this to them. And why am I saying it? Because I always want people to learn to think at the same time, irrespective of your age. I said, you have been in this system in Nepal before me, but tell me, advise me, what can I do to be promoted? Second, I said, I'm not. I know the way the news works and the different from the way the university system works. If you ever see me going against the tenets of the university system, who play call me to I will work together deeply, with very very much. He said, like I said, it was true. I was a deputy. Of course, we were HOD at the same time. He came the day and the day of the when he was doing a sabbatica, he had a daughter. That is, I was also the deputy at the day. But at the same time, I did the same thing. When I was to go for my sabbatica, even though I didn't go seven months into it, mm -hmm. three months into my sabbatica, before I finished my time as the day, I called my deputy, take over the seat. Or the election is done. Take over the seat. He sit on the king's seat. When I come, I sit on the discussion. And I said, if there are matters you need to cheat, that you think you don't know how to cheat, call me. But as far as I'm concerned, any decision about the faculty you are going to take is yours. I'm to support you. I did that three months into inspiration of my days, then I'm going to support you. Sir, when you talk about mentors, we have that problem in the university system. In my university, you should know I was a member of the team or a committee to write on this mentorship. We have a problem with us. And the problem is this. Are our junior colleagues, are they ready to be mentored? That's the question. The truth of the matter is that somebody that is just getting done today will be used to use he wants to prove to you that, look, as a student, as a thing, you are not. You want to speak big grammar. You try to correct him, like you said, they are abused. I don't think there's any other person that has been abused as much as I am in the same faculty. I was in a church program last Sunday when the students, our students, were doing things. And I told the pastor, I to come with this. I said, I ah, have these students. They are calling me now to be here, but I can tell you, they said, well, I kill a child, I will be the first person to kill. Because, like I said, there are some principles that some of us follow not fast. That you can us. I can say, I like to bring smile. He was the secretary when we were interviewed. This is the one that did the He was the secretary in 2002, November. No way in The point I'm making is that Mr. Washington, I've worked with you since 2003 to today. I've never found a fault on issues. And I've never found a fault, not because, like they say, it's traffic, it's because you follow a way that person. One of the first principles I like of work with you, which I've not done. Is to be a woman shot at home. As you see me, there is nothing you say or you do that shapes you. When his father died, 
I could not believe it, the kind of thing I saw my eyes. When my father died, my mother died, I said, Look, somebody I had a chocolate so my house would go. Those kind of things. Another thing that the two of us try to oppose, I used to tell people, you know, I always say I'm a slave to time. I'm a slave to time. So, I stand before everybody here. Since 2003, I started lecturing. I've never been late to my class. As a lecturer. I've never been late to my class. If I will not come, the student will come. Not that I will be doing something in my office and the student will be waiting for me. And likewise, which is one of the things that made me to buy. No student will ever come late. I enter my office class. I used to say, you know, they would go on like this. I used to say, hey, are you a member of MPA? You remember MPA? One nation. One nation. Are you a member of MPA? They cannot. Of course, when I don't tell them to in my own class, I can't even come into my class. With my police staff going to say, the boss is taking up by several times. And you think you are a super day, I mean, super SOT. You are calling several times, you are the boss is supposed to you went out for some and looked in the picture. In the name of God, in the name of Apple, Gayolo, I can't remember who you walk past to every day. Very much to present you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. To be your wife was held under my house of seats, handed over to me by the vice chancellor. As a mark of the uh, division of the road. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Guy, who will talk after this. But probably, uh, hmm, but I'm older than you. Uh, so we have a uh, relationship when we finish. Uh, you will not be as long as Professor Guy. Thank you very much. I was actually discouraging Professor G. Uh, to the bar. From Putin, because I thought we have had a long lecture from the list. But I uh, see Professor Ayaya here. I thought I should remind Ayaya Professor Nahaman, the Vice Chancellor. The Secretary. The Vice Chancellor of the Victoria, I mean, and of the Victoria D. They have gone to Professor Akedi. Now the first thing of the Faculty of Agriculture, National State University, was Professor Abedi. Then we used to have Senate in Kiev and the Faculty is here in Asia. A bill who was given to the team to convey all senators to attend Senate meetings in Kiev. But each time he was going for a meeting, he would make sure that he went alone without the two senior professors, I mean senior lecturers, Professor Alaman and Professor Jai, deliberately because he felt he was the, the car was given to only the team. And so he used to be there earlier than then. And then he had a way of depriving them from getting admission from the university. You will recall that Professor Yaini and Professor Rama we had to arrive one day to do what we did in the Senate. And uh, that was the end of the story. That was the last time Professor Ayaina had presented any request for admission in National State University. The point I'm trying to make, Rahama actually took over from Professor Makidi. And as soon as he took over, he changed the course of events in the faculty of agriculture by providing, by using the way to convince all Senate members from last year to take you for every Senate meeting. He now democratized 
actually everything in the faculty of agriculture. I actually stood up to confirm what Professor Jai said and to remind them of what they went through before becoming the deans themselves. Thank you. Yeah. I was a bit confused whether to come or not based on the list on the memo that was circulated. But because it was brought to me directly from the office of the registrar, so I decided to be here. So on that list, you have chairman and secretary of Christian community. And you have graciously recognized that there are two distinct Christian communities in the university. The Joint Christian Fellowship and the Catholic Community. In the course of our introducing ourselves, I deliberately did not mention that I was from the Catholic Community because it is not listed there. But I overheard somebody here introduce himself as the chaplain and the chairman of the Christian community. So, sir, I want to point out that that delineation should be clearly made that there is a Catholic community where you had appointed a chaplain and I am here in my capacity as the vice chairman of the chaplaincy lady council. And Professor Genye, who is sitting here in front, is also here in his capacity as the secretary of the chaplaincy, Catholic chaplaincy lady council. So please, in future, when the, the Christians are invited, it should be delineated to have the Joint Christian Fellowship and the Catholic Chaplain System. Thank you. Yeah. I'm at home. Whatever I want to do with me, I search a people. Before I came to you some times ago to ask you who you are, I've met with your friends from Kefra. They told me a lot about you. Still, I do not believe. That's why I came to you, to hear from you. I won't say what's his mother, because I'm not a person. You are like my mentor. I was trained by the head donor of Nigerian Theatre, late Riba Tukunde. I was his uh, position. Time is of essence. And I've been trying as much as possible to follow you up. Any time you say there is an occasion, I will be here about 20 minutes to, to see if you will be late. But before I get to this place, you are here. One can ask and say, Are you a spirit? I try to as possible to find faults in your passion. Yesterday I said, I can't praise you. But if I praise you, you might not do more. Today, I'm standing here to say you have this high decision. And I want to be seen that when someone sees a far, I take a look. You pass. You, you, you go down. Somebody said you wrote a, a paper. You see a paper that wrote the mind you write. I have a plan. Once upon a piece, I will write one of these with my uh, boss, Professor Tuga. He brought me to this place. He said it's okay for me from the Lagos, the Lagos, the Lagos, and here. I want to follow that step and I want to continue because of man. All of us are smiling with him. All of us are not afraid. Okay. All of us are trying as much as possible to come close to you, to know your secrets. For God will not show us our secrets. Why? Because if we know that secret, most of us will destroy it. Thank you. Yeah, you are 90 years old. <laughs> uh, I, want, I said I want to bet my dream on 
good salary that you're 90 years old. I've read books of Mahatma Gandhi who wrote my experiment with truth. I've also read a book by Nelson Mandela who wrote Roads to Freedom. But the wisdom that pours from you, I don't know where you got it from. So I asked her, considering your age, is it that you have stayed with, you are able to be one of your grandparents who is around 90 or 100, when you are 11 years or 13 years or so, that you are able to gather this wisdom? Because I know for you to notice, is it that somebody told you, you have read it or you have experienced it. Or if you are a prophet, maybe you have received a revelation. Where do you get it from?
in his feet. I try to see how I can go closer to to learn from him. But I have to tell you that the first time I attempted it, I had to run back. For instance, say, the minute I knock the door, say yes, you there, open the door. And the way you look at me, I close the door back and leave. But later on, I was blocked to attend one of his uh, classes. He taught me statistics and uh, introduction to diplomacy. And then introduction to diplomacy was not compulsory for a master's degree, but optional. I attended that and I taught him in the two courses. That now there was a certain interest in him. That showed me. He called me and said, You are from here, I spoke to him. So when we are mounting, applying the message, it's for PAD students. I approach him. And I say, Sir, I want to attend this class. Sir, it's for PAD students, and you are taking your message. I don't have to attend. I want to go to the so I attended that class and one day he was giving them test. You now ask him whether I can attend the question. I attended the question. And to his surprise, I saw what I did in the PAD candidates. So he now specially called to his office. He said, I'm giving you, because he was the head of the university, I'm giving you this opportunity to go into all the day classes. So, that is why I applied to the university. I wrote the exam and saw the end. He talked to the other course, the other course, I went into it and saw the end. So, to tell you this, Immediately I think defending my master's degree, I've already finished my course for games. So what I only did was my cycle. For course of game, I finished at my master's degree. So the, the issue is I was ready to mentor. That's why the that was. I was ready to mentor, but the person I wanted to mentor me initially disappeared. Not because I was courageous. I would have not written that. So I want to tell you that some of our young ones, you meet so many professors with different attitudes, but if they are ready to be mentor, no matter even if it is a lie that you want, you will see something in the lie and you want that lie to mentor you. You will just see the way you approach. That I, I will get what you want. Therefore, in the case of the senior ones, also, you see, there are times that some of us will do certain things that the younger ones see nothing to learn from us. You see nothing to learn from us. We have seen several cases where the way we do things, even our assistant lecturer will not do things like that. The of professors are doing things. So if you are somebody that uh, maybe you, you, you are a professor and you are doing things in the eyes of a lecturer too, you are doing things like an assistant lecturer, and you want that person to come down and say, because you look at you as an assistant lecturer, based on your attitude to work, your attitude to research, you are the one who collecting money either from students to write projects for them. One that will go, which of this big uh, student is rich, so that you want them to buy tire for them. So, so it is. And you want to see the office to feel that they are like professional. Then the, the another thing that is spoiling some of our younger ones is the way we participate in our unions. Somebody will be in the church. 
in the Jurachi. And because it's essentially in Asu, the professor has not right to talk to me. Because it's, uh, it's essentially to academic sound. Some of them that are here, like there is no lack of them, who sometimes the way they approach professors. What I'm calling is a professional, but I think uh, he will not also be back when the younger one is also in the middle. But what I want to know is if you are a professor, try to behave in the way that the younger one should see something to learn from you. For me, I have never found it difficult to mentor younger ones. I have never found it difficult. And as I'm talking to you, to you today, I have almost six professors in the other economy that are my mentees. And up to today, they are still consulting me. Up to today. So, two of them, two of them when I was in the beginning of Amos of Agri, they were uh, uh, they are trees. I brought them. They are already professional in the federal university of Kusima. When they were in the national state university, they told their father the federal state until Professor Abraham agreed for you to go, go and take back to the Tell him this is where you are going. He's the person I know that has been training people from the beginning. So now that I see the lecturer, he took you people, he took you people here, ask him. If you are right now to leave, and they told us, to me, you are already a senior lecturer, and uh, you can go anywhere. The father had to call me and say, Your boy is not the best in what is. I said, You are not trained off to decide. And I can tell us to be the same as all the ministers. So it depends also on ourselves. On ourselves. Sometimes we feel too big. Sometimes we are too hard, and sometimes we review ourselves, sometimes in many other activities. So, younger ones want a better future, and they should see something in you that will give them that better future. Yes, that's the reason again why a baby is a kind of policy that every faculty should have mentoring skill. Mentoring can be informal, it can be formal. And particularly in the university, mentorship is really compulsory. Because it's a place where you train people. It's compulsory. So, and that's why I say now we should make this a system. I know I enjoy it when I was in the Arnold University area. I was attached to a senior lecturer who is taking on the graduate students. I was attached to a professor who is teaching to graduate students. I didn't start teaching without being mentored. Because I didn't teach teaching, you need mentor, mentorship, you need to be mentored for it. There are some people today, they will even get all the professors they can only marketing. Marketing. You start not just sit down and make marketing. You must have the skill for it. For me, I was mentored to teach on the graduates. I was mentored to teach on the graduates. Even becoming a head of the I was mentored. So this is very important that the department of faculty to prepare this so that those that are not even ready to be mentored, when we have a formal scheme in place, they will be forced to work with the senior group. A issue raised by Mr. Bello, we are going to look at it and see how that area can be spent. My friend that talked about uh, not everybody uh, is your friend on this. Well, to me, I believe in any system where I work as a person. I believe I don't have any. And it is that assumption that I'm using that I don't have any. But I don't also confuse myself when I'm in a position like this. There are friends of 
Siwa Kudama And there are friends of Christ and Siwa There are friends of Siwa Kudama and there are friends of Christ and Siwa And I'm not confused in identifying some friends Because I know by the time I leave office, I will live with the, my friends Siwa Kudama And the friends of uh, Vice Chancellor, they will, do, they will go to another Vice Chancellor. The same thing, I'm not confused between the friends of the university and the friends of my administration. Some people may not be my friend, but they are friends of my administration. And those that are friends of my administration are the one that nobody should be a friend of my administration. It's good for you to be a friend of the best because that's the way I am friends. Right from maybe up to the South University, maybe up to the Federal University that year, I am a friend of the best. And that's why I can work with any person at all. But if I'm a friend of an organization, by the time that organization goes, I find it difficult to work with another organization. So it is good for all of us to understand this. Uh, where do you get this idea from? Well, uh, we all have parents. I had the opportunity to stay in two with my grandfather, and most of the team is our wisdom. I have the opportunity to stay also with my father for some time before I went for the rest of the education, and after some time when it was not possible for them, my mother and my father to stay because of what my mother and I took all of them to that day. They all died in my hands. And what I got from them, honestly, is always the issue of our wisdom. One of it is that this comes directly from my father. Don't ever have anything sometimes. Don't ever have my own words. Come from Paris, anyway. And that's why even in this university today, I've said this several times. The way I run a clean is the same way I run a the legacy. They are not different. Because you don't know what you are doing from all this. And what also emphasizes to me is the last advice my mother gave me. And he says, You see your first daughter? I've said it when I was in the project. Your first daughter, you did my name to you. You have any problem. You have no more no problem to share it. She's carrying my name. Sit her down. She's calling you. You meet my ideas in her. And I can tell you this happened. Some things are not even tell my wife. Tell my friend mother. Sometimes when I tell her, that don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Let's walk on this. Now keep. Let her run away with food and everything. And uh, ah, how can I say? You see, ask the daughter. She's not allowed to sit down. No, we have to ask what you want. So this is one of the things. Up today, she is my daughter. But she had many ideas. Following advice and parents. For some of us that are still having parents, this is very important. This is very, very important. Whatever you are going to get in the future, let your parents pray for you.
That is why I want to say that anytime I think of how I relate with my parents of the dead, the return to life, I feel happy. And I feel courageous to tell anybody anything because their prayer is on me. So I want to thank everyone, of course, that this leadership position, this leadership forum has come and stayed. We shall be running minds, sharing ideas. Nothing will be new to any stakeholder in this university. We shall all be discussing together. Nobody will say, oh, this is for the Christian community, this is for the Christian community. It is for the university. We are all here. And I want all of you to show that we are all here temporarily. We are all here temporarily. Don't create a unity for yourself. There are some of our colleagues that have decided, oh, I've got to have a problem with me. So, we still find ourselves. All you will die, all you will die. So, that's why I'm saying, I say, if all of us are here, Forty years, we will not meet anybody here. We that we are here, any of any one person, forty years ago, is another one who will be in the So why are you this one person? And also, no matter your status in this university, you cannot carry this university to your house. You will leave it here and go. <laughs> so let us have peace in mind. Whether that you want to do anything against anybody, just think of this. Why am I doing this? Am I carrying this university to my house when I'm in? Or why am I doing this? Would I like to be here maybe after four years ago? If you know that all these are not possible for you, you will not create any difference. Council, we deem it fit and necessary to 
award the license of Malaysia as the icon of hope 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 